Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Uh, good uh, morning. Having a good week so far? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we are too. Um, <laughs> We are taping this uh, ahead of time. We're going, uh, Lynn and I are going up the Vail uh, for the 4th of July. We're we'll celebrate uh, my, celebrate birth, my birthday, birthdays, her birthday, right? our anniversary, and just have some good old relaxing uh, time. We're going to just work at doing nothing and hiking and being together, mm-hmm. sharing life together, being in the Word together. Uh, we, actually, when we go on a little trip, we actually go deeper into our abiding. We use it as a great time to get deeper into the word, time mm-hmm. to time to pray, process our stuff. Um, we really use it. Uh, so we don't actually take a vacation from God. We actually go deeper into God. So it's kind of, right. kind of a Kendra, cool thing. Kendra, who we've had on here before, she would call it a Godcation. It's a Godcation. That's you know, good. a Godcation. It's a great time to press in even further, right? Yeah. Um, so you teased us last time with a story about ankles. So tell us yes. uh, a little supernatural story about that. Yeah, so as we've been talking about healing and stuff, I just want to share this in real time. This happened um, in June. Now, y'all were taping this a little bit early. And so this was in my world just a week ago from this taping. I had a group, you have to preface with this with the fact that years of cheerleading and gymnastics, I have had ankle injury after ankle injury. Yeah. The number of times I have stretched and torn ligaments in my left ankle is ridiculous. So I know it well, I know what comes with it, I know what the PT looks like, I know what the boot looks like, what the (laughs) brace looks like, have done it far too many times. You you probably own a boot, right? Oh, oh, I do, I own a boot, I own own a boot, boot. I own it, you know, all of it. I I think I own a wing at the Access Physical Therapy. But (laughs) uh, regardless, um, I had a group of moms over from our church and their kids for a pool party the other day and just having so much fun out there with them. I don't have grandkids, so I just pretend all of their kids are mine. Yeah, you know? yeah. So having a great time, and I don't know what I did, but I slipped on a step of the pool. Mm. And when I say I cranked my ankle, I just absolutely cranked my ankle, which I did this just six months ago too, and landed in a boot and had to go through physical therapy. And you no, know, actually probably more like seven or eight months. But anyway, it wasn't that long ago that I had just done this again. But when this one happened, I mean, I heard pops mm. immediately. It's swollen like it always swells on this one side. Yeah. But this time it didn't just swell on that side that it usually does. The entire top of my foot swelled and the inside. So both sides are swollen and along the top. And I can see it's immediately turning blue. Mm. It is already a whole different gamut. And so everybody's like, are you OK? Are you OK? And I'm like, mm. I got to tell you, this one's worse than normal. (laughs) Like I've done it enough to know it wasn't just the one side I had. Now I had pulled ligaments on both sides of it. And um, so I already in my mind, as soon as it happened, the narrative of my summer went south. Mm. You know, I was already picturing all these plans I had for taking my kayak out, for taking the Um, my e-bike out and playing for hikes for just different adventures that I had walking through Boston and praying I had all this agenda that I had just recently been teeing up with God of you know what's your bucket list for my summer and what do you want and so had dreamed some of these things out and lo and behold I'm looking at it now going I'm I'm back in a boot I'm back to physical therapy I can't do any of this blah 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 woe is me Um, you know So I went through the rest of the day, enjoyed the rest of the pool party, and then came inside and, um, you know, knew enough to go ahead and elevate an ice and pout. Um, (laughs) Elevate an ice and pout. Getting ready for getting ready for a long recovery, right? Yeah. And so I call Anna in and I'm like, can we just pray about this and ask God what he has to say about my stupid ankle? 
And so we pray together and I'm like, okay, let's, let's take some time to listen. And then after, after we do that, I'm like, did you hear anything? And she's like, I heard that you're supposed to ask your small group to, that you're supposed to like get off of it now, be okay with being dependent for a couple of days on somebody. And you're supposed to ask your small group that's coming over tonight, which by the way, I was supposed to be cooking dinner for, <laughs> um, you're supposed to ask them to pray over it. And she's like, what did you hear? And I'm like, I didn't hear anything. It's a stupid ankle. <laughs> so literally just- So your, your, uh, your hearing I'm, mechanism was uh, not quite uh, in tune, right? It was not yeah. in tune at the moment. And so I'm like, okay, fine. And she's like, I can cook dinner for them. I can do this. And, and I'm not one to like to slow down. And so she had to fuss at me a little bit and whatever. So I begrudgingly, I'm like, well, at least she heard something. I'll listen to that. <laughs> so I did sit down and let her take the reins on some things. And then um, before my small group left that night, I asked them, I was like, you know, hey, this is what's gone on, you know, and will you pray for it? And so they did. And um, then I had my boot out, even ready to put it on. I limp upstairs to go to bed. And I'm still just pouting because I'm not honestly even believing. I'm like, I know God, Anna hears from God, but he didn't tell me that. So maybe he's not really doing anything. I don't know what's going on. So I wake up the next day. Again, I have my Tuesday ladies group coming over. I sit and I have my time with Jesus in the morning. And um, he highlights to me um, a few different things. I won't read all of this, but it was super fun. Y'all, I did, you know, I started it out with, Father, I'm frustrated. <laughs> I'm frustrated. I'm looking at my ankle. I'm looking at the instruction that you gave me yesterday and the dreams you laid out, and they all require my ankle. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> you know, and so I'm being a little bit of a brat about it. And it's funny because one of the instructions he had given me the day before even was like, as we played with the children to watch the children and to watch their joy and their joy independence. Mm. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> what are you setting me up for here? Um, but anyway, you know, so I'm, I'm dialoguing with him about that. And then I felt like he said, and I have written out in my, in my um, journal, you know, just asking about the healing. I felt like he said, you don't have because you don't ask. Mm. Ask me in prayer. You ask me, not just everybody else. And then gather two to three and pray over your ankle. And you know, this ankle is small for me. I can do this. And he <laughs> highlighted these four verses, uh, the, the three fives, I call them. Um, Joshua 3, 5, which is, um, and Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. Keep in mind, Tuesdays is in my rhythm of something God has laid out for this year, Tuesdays, which is what this day was, is a day of fasting for mm. me. And so a day set aside just for sanctification. And I fast from food until dinner time and just to tune in, to hear him more clearly and to seek him. And I'll set aside extra time to really do some listening exercises. So Joshua 3, 5. So that was in there. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Psalms 3, 5. And this one threw me for a loop for a little bit until the next day. It said, I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord has sustained me. And then the last one was John 3, 5. Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then I felt like God said, don't settle for mediocre and make me small. I will be glorified, believe and step into it. And so, you know, and then just that reminder of entering the kingdom of God is where the supernatural takes place. So then my ladies come over and I'm like, okay, I'm being obedient. He is saying, you know, he told Anna yesterday to gather people, to be dependent, to gather people, to pray over it. He just told me again to do that. And so I had um, my Tuesday ladies pray over it. And then that evening, I felt like God said again, have Josh and Emily gather and the three of you pray over it. Mm -hmm. So there were three different times that he said that in the middle of that day, this is where I was a little bit bratty still, I'm going to say, uh, middle of that day, Anna and I were having a great time together. Just, I was you know, sitting on the couch with my leg up on ice, so couldn't do anything else either, but fasting and praying. And we decided this would be a great day for us to just really lay out some questions. So both of us laid out questions that we have that we just wanted to hear about. And we decided we would process and pray together and come back and share all of this. So we're having a great day with it. And um, in that time, again, I'm asking him at one point, one of the main questions I have is what about my ankle? 
And he tells me again, you've resigned yourself to a mediocre summer and no good activity. I didn't say this. I spoke adventure. I spoke experience. This is your heart's desire and passion, seeing me move in incredible ways. And he said, you know, explore, walk, pray, observe, shine, be alert, be with me and ask me to heal. I've already told you this. I already told Anna this. And then he said, you'll, by the way, focus on exercises this summer to strengthen your ankle so that this doesn't continue. <laughs> I'm like, okay, good, good word there, God. Um, and he highlighted a verse, Hebrews 10, 36, for you have need of endurance that when you've done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. And um, as I continued throughout the day, I kind of, you know, there were things that he said and I'm like, okay, God, you're saying this, but that means, means I need my ankle. And he's like, I've, we've had this conversation. Don't you get it? I told you, you're going to have your ankle. So like I said, prayed with Josh and Emily one more time. And by that time, God had throughout the day of fasting and prayer and asking and me being a brat and then me surrendering and then me being a brat and then me surrendering. Um, he really had got me to a place in scripture and in words that he had spoken that he was about to do a healing and I may not see it. And I'm telling you, it hurt that it, it hurt worse than I've had it hurt in a long, long, long time. Um, and so I limped up the stairs to bed and really went to bed thinking I am going to wake up and I'm going to see a miracle has happened and this is going to be interesting. So I, at this point, he had worked me to the believing that the yes is coming and that the yes is coming the next morning. I kid you not, I wake up Wednesday morning. I went to bed with it swollen and blue, couldn't walk the stairs without help getting up, couldn't get in and out of things. And I woke up, got out of bed, took a couple steps, took a couple more steps, got to the steps, was ready to go down one at a time and realized I could walk down them perfectly normal. And when I got to the bottom, I could jump up and down zero pain. Mm. That's remarkable. And, and this was with me even being a brat in the yeah. middle of all of it, you know, <laughs> but I stayed with him. <laughs> this is, this is where I'm like, okay, so even when we're in that, you know, we're doubting and whatever, when we stay with him and let him keep speaking truth and we keep pressing in and asking and surrendering and sometimes re-surrendering, you know, it comes back to, you know, you talked about last podcast, coming to Jesus, having a heart to hear from him, worshiping and recognizing who he is and, and what he can do but then surrendering our will in that, right? And then asking him, what's our real problem? I mean, how many times did I ask, you know, hey, what do you have to say about this ankle? Because if you're saying this, and I believe these things that you said to be true, these two don't go together. So yeah. what do you have to say? And it was just a beautiful example. And I know that's not how it works every time, um, but it was a really faith building experience for me and for all the people that, by the way, he invited in and he said, no, I want you to call this group of three in to pray, this group of three in to pray. This is, this is what I'm doing. And all of these people are involved yeah. in their faith building in the process of it. Yeah. What did that uh, help you understand about God's heart uh, as somebody is struggling with, you know, this is, this is not good. And it's unlikely to, to actually be resolved. But mm -hmm. uh, like you said, I, I am talking to him. But what does that tell right. you? What does that tell you about God's heart through the process? God's heart is to stay with us in yeah. that. He wants to bring us to belief. Yeah. You know, that was he wasn't I mean, he wasn't smacking me upside the head, say, oh, you're not, you know, you're not believing this yet. So we're just not going to do it. You're right. just going to have to live in pain. He's like, no, I'm going to, you know, yeah. I'm going to speak what you need to hear for your faith to grow in this. And I want you to take the next step of obedience I'm calling you to receive what I'm saying. And if I'm asking you to do something, do it and let me keep honing your faith in this. Right, right. Does he mind the struggle? No, in no. fact, he, he let me be a brat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he let me be a brat in that. And, and just, I think the heart, you know, you talk about it all the time, the heart to go, he knew even in my brattiness, my heart was, I want to be where you want me to be doing what you want me to do. So, you know, take me through this process, whatever this is going to look like. Yeah. And that's where the, uh, uh, you know, and of course you read a verse about, you know, uh, you got to be. Uh, born again to be in the kingdom but that where mm -hmm. the spirit is is that it's all happens in the kingdom and yeah. and this is this is an important uh, truth that everybody needs to understand is it's not us being perfect in the kingdom no it's being in the kingdom mm -hmm. and in the kingdom which is what you described is 
um, you're not really surrendered. You're kind of, uh, you use the word bratty, <laughs> but you're still in, in process with him. Mm -hmm. And here's what's cool is that, uh, and I believe this is why we are able to stay in process with him. He keeps talking. Yes, absolutely. And he says, well, how about this? Well, and I kept asking and he kept talking. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was an ongoing dialogue yeah. through the whole thing. Yeah. So beautiful. that, so that you kind of know, well, I'm still in the kingdom because why? Well, I'm hearing his voice mm -hmm. and see his voice and his heart isn't, and this is something we all need to receive it is it's not about you being perfect mm -hmm. and you're, you're here with the kingdom and you're, completely surrendered and have faith he says actually all I need you to be is with me and just talk mm -hmm. to me authentically and the key is you got to listen to what I have to say right um, which is you know what he did and he'll keep talking to you and and you can see his heart just by your description okay let let me help you let me help you come come over here let me help mm -hmm. you show show you something I know I know I know I know <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but let me invite you because there wasn't any harshness, wasn't any judgment. Right. And right. think of, uh, uh, you could have thwarted his will. Hmm. What, what could you have done that would have stopped it all? Gotten out of dialogue with him yeah. on it. That's it. You know, uh, ain't going to happen. Forget it. I'm going to go throw my boot um, on and ignore what you have to say yeah. about this. <laughs> and see, he would, he would have said, okay, I'll let you do that. Mm -hmm. You don't need to. And I'm going to show you a healing and uh but just keep walking with me and because you do understand that and i i do believe even while you were discouraged you're actually still being encouraged but he's actually talking to you <laughs> right absolutely that's so true <laughs> oh that's a good news <laughs> and reminding me of things that he said so that i would i would be encouraged absolutely. he knew how to encourage my heart in the middle of it yeah that's know? right that's right what a great uh story and you're doing fine and yeah you're not... i mean it's it's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine. It it makes zero sense. I mean, I am telling you, this was worse than any ankle injury I've had in the last 10 years. Yeah. I, I just want to pray. <laughs> Father, uh, I'm just overwhelmed by uh, the fact that, that uh, you bring healing, and it's not kind of, and it's not just managed better. Uh, you truly took a damaged ankle mm -hmm. and just healed it. Uh, and you wanted to show Kathy... You wanted to, interesting enough, I believe you're inviting those others to join her to, for them to mm -hmm. see it and to learn something. Because your heart is, I would like to do supernatural things. And all I'm asking you to do is come with me with an authentic heart and just walk with me and let me keep talking. Let me keep mm -hmm. sharing with you. And your heart is just so loving and kind and generous that uh, you don't mind the struggle as long as we stay in the struggle. And mm -hmm. so we praise you and thank you for Kathy's ankle and what a what a great testimony of complete healing and supernatural in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, it kind of um, uh, follows as we go to this next uh, verse. Remember, we're talking about process. Mm -hmm. um, how do we receive this? And we've talked about come and worship, speak the issue understand authority, uh, which mm -hmm. you kind of did because you were saying, you know, what do you have to say about this? Right. Uh, this next one is kind of interesting. Go to Matthew 9, 27 to 31. Sure. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the verses. Remember, we talked about uh, one of the questions I always had is when he told people not, not to do it, <laughs> they told everybody, you know, what was, yep. that, what was that all about? And again, uh, the insight that I got was I never wanted it to be a duty I wanted it to flow freely of the mm. joy of what, and they, right. could, they couldn't but help share. They couldn't help but testify, yeah. Uh, so again, let's look at the verbs here. Uh, so go ahead and reread this and we'll look at the verbs. Sure. What, did they, what are they doing to be in a position to receive the healing? So it says, when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, 
crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. Yeah. So we've got uh, several verbs right there. <laughs> yeah. So they're following. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm going to go to him. Mm -hmm. um, and they're trying to get his attention. Uh, son of David, son of God, uh, I know who you are. Mm -hmm. Would you have mercy uh, on me? And right. uh, the question uh, is uh, rooted in the covenant. And mm -hmm. that is that I do understand something about the covenant, that you're going to bless me to make me a blessing. But I'm at the moment, we're not experiencing that because of our physical limitation. Mm -hmm. Um, and, <laughs> it, it, you know, again, this is the way I think and the funny stuff. Okay. <laughs> Who's following him? They are. Who, who are they? These two blind men. Okay, two blind guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, uh, that is a fun. I've never all right. thought about Well, how that. are they doing that? <laughs> how am I following him? That's a good How point. am I following him? <laughs> I can't see a thing, you know, what, hmm. how am I following him? You know, and so uh, they're, they're close. Right. See, they're getting real mm. close to him and they can hear him. And they can hear him. They can hear him. Yeah. Uh, two blind guys are following him because they can hear him. And they say, you know, um, could you fulfill the covenant, mm -hmm. the favor for us who, you know, we, we're limited uh, we're even fortunate that we can be near you. They mm -hmm. actually hear you, who you are, and be with you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so they, they're pursuing him. Okay, now keep going. What's the next thing? It's kind of cool. Um, and when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. Okay. And Jesus, okay. So uh, now they've not, they've they learned something. Mm -hmm. I'll, I, in order for me <laughs> to actually find out, mm -hmm. I got to be next to him. Right. Um, and they followed him into the house. Mm. And again, you know, and see, in my mind, it's like, how do they even find the door? <laughs> 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 it's while they're listening. Right. And, right. and they're walking where they, because they're sensitive and, and blind people are sensitive. They can hear mm -hmm. good. Okay. I, I hear these steps. I hear this. I'm going to go with them. They go with them into the house. Right. Um, and they come to him. Mm -hmm. So now they're right next to him. Right. Um, and he knows why they're, why they're there. They spent mm -hmm. all this energy to get in front of him. Right. And he, and he knows they got a problem because he's observed, mm -hmm. you know. And I think, again, um, I, I think Jesus has fun and, and joy. And I believe when he looked at these two guys... He looked and said, man, you guys are quite clever, mm -hmm. you know, that you're able to do this when you can't see. Right. You know, right. You, you guys are quite clever, you know, and so they come to him. We're seeing a common thing here, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Got to go. You got to go. You're going to have to go. Okay. Then let's look at what happens next. This is cool. Um, the men came to him and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, so Jesus knew what they wanted. Mm -hmm. We need favor. We're standing here mm -hmm. wondering. And Jesus asked them a question. Right. What does he say? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe I'm able to do this for you? Mm -hmm. Do you believe I'm able to do this for you? And uh, I know what you want, but I have a question. Mm -hmm. Where's your faith in this? Right. You came all this way. You spent mm -hmm. all this all this energy, you clever guys, and got here in front of me. Do you believe I can do this? Really? Do you really mm -hmm. believe I can do this? Is that why you've they come? They declared their answer, yes. They said, yeah. And they didn't say, eh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Are you, uh, and they could have said, I don't know. What do you say about that? Uh, he said, do you believe it? And their immediate answer was, we've already sorted this through. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why we came. Right. We believe it. We believe that you're mm -hmm. going to do it. 
And I, I'm glad you asked that question. Yes, I've already sorted that through. Um, I've already come, That's and, th and this is cool. Why? That's why they spent all that time going after it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it was like, yeah, I doubt it. Why bother? You know, why, it's, it's so difficult to try to follow him anyway. So, you know, we're just stuck with our poor, you know, condition. We already, we've already discussed this. Remember, there's two of them. Mm -hmm. They both said yes. We know you can do it. We believe you can do it. We're here for you to do it. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus says what? He says, you'll see to it that no one knows it. No, before that, before that. Oh, before. So um, they, he says, they say yes, and what does Jesus say? Um, then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, faith, let it be to you. Okay, boys. Since you've declared your faith, mm -hmm. and I know you've had to process this already, let's, let's, yeah. do, let, let's do it, let's fulfill it. Your faith is rewarded, and, and all the energy you spent Mm -hmm. to get in front of me, mm. demonstrate your faith. Right. So it's, it's, it's here's a, here's a, if you want to receive the supernatural, um, and you kind of did that with your ankle, is you spent the energy. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to get in front of them. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy, and I'm struggling. Right. And I'm kind of, you know, a little bit bratty about it, but. Right. I believe it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I, if I, all I got to do is be with him. I got to be with him. I got to be with him. I'm going to get in front of him. I'm going after it. You spent the energy to go after mm -hmm. it, which, by the way, you could have thwarted it by just saying, "Out of heck with it." Right. Right. Um, and part of the driving, I will say, part of the driving of me staying with it in that is that you know we talk about when he speaks certain things. Like I said earlier. I don't know, maybe a week or two before that, I had really spent some time and I had felt like he had given me some real directives, um, some interesting directives of divine appointments and places that he wanted to send me. And, and so in my brattiness, I was like, okay, I feel like I sought you and heard clearly that these are things that you have on my calendar right, for the right, summer. Right, right. Yeah, right. And they require my ankle. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you have to say yeah. about that? Yeah, what about that? <laughs> you okay, know? Here, come and here. so I was trying to reconcile, you know, I, I believe I heard this, right. but now I'm in this. I need you to help me make sense of this. And yeah. he's like, that's because you're looking at it through your eyes. Yeah. How about you just ask me? Yeah. And so you know? um, keep thinking. Um, Take the energy to go after it mm -hmm. um, and pursue it and do everything you can to get there and process. And, and uh, if you do, it's demonstrating already that there's a belief. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't bother. Right, right. Uh, uh, and they believed it because they, they really went after it. They spent the energy to go after it. So I would, mm -hmm. I would say you know, what this means is everybody, let's raise our energy toward mm -hmm. pursuing it. Okay, Father, uh, we need to spend more time and talk to your spouse and talk to your friends and, and be in his presence and, and say, you know, uh, help me with this problem. Mm -hmm. and, your, and your life is the covenant, and I'm not experiencing the covenant. I need some, some uh, supernatural work on your behalf, right. and I'm going to pursue you so that I can be in front of you. And, and when you ask me the question, do I believe it, I've already settled it. The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. So we'll, we'll yeah, pick it up uh, next cool. time. Thanks again for that great story and reminding us that it's not about us being perfect. It's just having a heart to go. Right. Absolutely. So, well, thank you yep. so much. And um, it's great to, great to get to share that. I yeah. think God likes us to share those details, yep. right? Yep. In the journey. Yep. But um, thanks for listening, everybody. And hope you have a wonderful day. If you have questions, send them in to questions at afjministry.com. And we'd be love, we would love to talk about it. Yep. So and I pray, we'll I pray you. that, I pray that we'll, when you ask us the question, do you believe I'm able? May we say yes. And we thank you in Christ's mm, name. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll see you soon. See you tomorrow. Welcome to Come and See. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.